So uh, it's been on since then. So the, right now we have 13 families on the earth and their posterity who think it is their right to rule the earth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They think they are in charge. Yeah. And, and they also so interbreed, you see. What happens when you interbreed with second cousins in particular, you get uh, uh, psychopathic tendencies and deformities. If you look at the royal family in England, uh, here's Elizabeth. She has two aunties that died in insane asylums. So that's how close it is to the, the core. And uh, that's what, what happens in uh, these relationships where second cousins marry. Ironically, first cousins can marry and not have this problem. So it's, uh, it's a very odd thing to say that, but that, that is the reality. So on, on so the one hand, you're saying that these, that these 13 families, they think that they have a right to rule the earth, and so they yeah. intermarry with one another in order to maintain their control and their manipulation. That's right. That's right. So, and so uh, what we have then here, is, uh, if you want to get into the Bible for just a second, you've got John 8.44, look that up. And there's Jesus telling you what they're all about. You are of your father the devil, descendants of Cain. So from a parable point of view, I'm not saying a factual point of view, from a parable point of view, and all things that Jesus did were parables, uh, he's saying, listen, what you've got to watch out for, this, this demonic force that uh, inhabits human beings like a parasite, and, uh, of course, they've taken over the world. It's a Babylonian you're saying, cult. You're saying that this demonic possession is having an effect on their decision that it's okay for this oil bleeding in the Gulf to take place. Yeah, I don't want to kill you. We'll continue after the break. This is RBN. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Good morning. This is the Morning Liberty Program. I'm RJ. Thanks for tuning in. My guest this morning is Brian Marshall. And there are many things on our plate this morning that deserve our attention. Um, one of the things, Brian, that I see happening is diversion. It's like passing the buck of blame onto somebody else. And this morning, they want to keep us preoccupied with this general um, and and his resignation. And I don't think, you know, McChrystal, he had writers from the Rolling Stone magazine hang with him for a while. And this McChrystal may be offering his resignation today. And we'll see what Obama does with this. But taking a look at, I remember when I had my construction company, it's like every day was different. It's like, what is the number one most important thing we need to do today? What's the number two most important thing we need to do today? And I think, in my opinion, the number one most important thing that we need to do now is to solve this gaping hole that is in the ocean floor um, there in the Gulf of Mexico. And what they are now doing will not solve that. In fact, it's just getting worse. And the detail that I ran across late, late last night and this morning is the ocean floor that is rising like a bubble because of natural gas. And if that thing were to blow, we're not talking about right now there's about a 22-inch diameter well of, of BP into the ocean floor. And this oil that has been bleeding, leaking more than 4 million gallons a day into that area, that needs to be stopped just as soon as possible. And I think that what BP is now doing, it may not stop, in fact, this leakage of oil in the Gulf. Are well, you quite right. Uh, can you hear me, Robert? Yeah, we, we can hear you fine. It's almost as okay, if now. Not, the people who are the true decision makers there, that's not what they want. They don't want this. No, 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 that's right. Now. You're on the, you're really on the brink of civil war in America because this, if this doesn't get solved right now, then you've got a big problem. Now, I uh, put the solution up to this when it first happened within days of it going uh, to the news and it reached us in Australia. And because I worked in the industry, I know how to fix it. But uh, as I said, now, if you go to uh, Lucifer Oil Rig Attack 1, 
on the Michelle Nye YouTube, you can see it. It goes right through there. It'll show you how it can be easily solved. It's but just a matter of doing it. But solving this is not what they want. No, with, but with them, how are you going to get around it? If your army, so your army should be looking out for the people. They're not. They're obeying uh, a skull and bonesman that's got, uh, who's a president. And he's un his name, by the way, skull and bonesman's name is Undertaker. So to me, I am astounded how the American Christian Bible Belt in particular will elect a man who is admitted to being a skull and bonesman and then the president in America, before him, Bush, was a skull and bonesman. In America, Bush that is the devil. clear. The people here do not know oh. that Obama has a skull and bones nickname. But I'll tell you what, what a nickname that is. The Undertaker? Oh, my God. The Undertaker. Now, understand... this gets us into the prima camps, Robert. If, if you want to go understand... back to the Bush early days when they built these 600 or more FEMA camps, what do they got them for? They knew about this oil that was going to be the, the hinge pinch of knocking on the door of death because this oil exploration is utter nonsense. When I worked up in, in uh, the Athabasca tar sands, they had a thousand years supply of oil there in Canada. There's another 30 years supply minimum off the coast of Australia for the whole world. Not more talking about the uh, western slopes and the, the uh, Alaska area. And now I believe the Mackenzie pipeline's been closed down because the oil with grit in it has uh, worn away the inside of the pipe, so therefore it is no longer usable. So what happens with crude oil, it has in it grit. And when it comes out at high pressure, like 100,000 PSI, that pipe that was holding it, and they're showing you this little bit of oil coming out on the CNN or whatever they show you on, that's utter nonsense. At 100,000 PSI, you wouldn't have little fishes swimming around, sniffing about seeing what's going on. It would create a venturi effect like a jet engine, but a hundred times more powerful. It would be just uh, uh, an extraordinary thing to see. You wouldn't be able to get a, a camera down near it because it would suck it in and just destroy it. it, it so kind of what's like happening is the oil it. is coming up through the through the uh, strata. It's already broken through probably 30 or 40 feet thick of uh, a hole that's coming up, and it's just, just bleeding out several hundred metres across up through the the floor of the uh, the Gulf. Well, That's whatever, what it is, whatever it is that they are now doing, it is not doing the job. No. They're going to wait until it blows up and kills you. The job... Oh, then they'll say, oh, well, what a mistake. That must have been the British had done it or the, the Koreans done it or some, I blame somebody, Iran perhaps. It's amazing how gullible people are to, to fall for it. Well, if, if we get back to their real intention there in the Gulf, it's just like their real intention every other place. These Satanists, they, they will yeah. lie and they will kill and they will destroy. That's what they do. That's they it. lie and they yeah. kill and they destroy. And so we have their man in the presidency, this Obama, the undertaker. He is the one who should the be taking yeah. his resignation, but who do we replace him with? Again, the real intention is to lie and to steal and to destroy and, and to kill. And so that's what they're up to in the Gulf. They want to kill the Gulf area. They want to kill America. That's right. That's what it is. And the people behind it. Well, well, I, I, it goes back to the Queen. She owns BP, really. Uh, I, I made a uh, threat to the Queen and sent a declaration to her on the 2nd of uh, June, and she received it on the 14th. And uh, I told her what to do and how to fix it. Now, will she yes. do it? Of course not. This thing is fixable. Of course it's fixable. It's easy fixable. They've got to do it now. Now, it's going to take about 20 days for a ship to get from West Australia full of iron ore and then start dumping, and then you've got it fixed. The first load will start the recovery. And for the oil, you get this Texas um, bacteria they've used, and uh, that'll start eating the, uh, the crude away in the sea itself and also along the, uh, the uh, wetlands. Easily fixed. If, if this does not get fixed quickly, more death will occur.